Hello, my name is Alan, and uh, this is a little talk um, I created about uh, screencasting. Uh, I have to say, I actually completely hate the term screencasting in the same way that I hate the term podcasting. But it's a term that's entered into you know the IT consciousness, and people use it. So, uh, uh, which is why my thing was called recording demonstration videos or recording the screen or whatever. So, uh, what are we going to look at? I do it. Uh, what are the options for doing it? Uh, how do the various options stack up? Uh, how do they compare? Um, what do I use and what do I think you should use? Uh, so let's start with why screencasting? Well, screencasting is basically recording what you've got on the screen and either putting it available on the web or giving it to someone on a CD or you know, making it available somehow. And uh, these are the basic work points that give you the reasons why screencasting is a kind of good idea. Um, if you record a demo on your PC and you upload it to the web, then lots of people can download it. So therefore you can show many people by just doing the demo once. Uh, people can watch it again and again. I don't know about you, but I don't always learn straight away when someone tells me how to do something once. Someone often has to tell me two or three times and probably punch me while they're doing it in order to get me to remember exactly how to do something. Uh, and equally, you'll get tired as the person creating the, the demo or giving the education. You get, kind of get tired doing it over and over and over again. There's only so many times you can tell someone how to upgrade a Debian system from one release to another before it gets you know, quite annoying, unless, of course, you're being paid for it. And even then, it's still a bit annoying now and then. So that's why recording demos on your PC and making them available is a good idea from my point of view. I've got a few use cases. Here's one. Um, I created, uh, uh, set up a PC for my brother and I set one up for my, my uh, wife. And uh, I installed Ubuntu on both of them and uh, they're working okay. But every so often I get the odd question from them. How do I do this? How do I do that? And sometimes the questions are the same. I'll get a question from my wife and the same question will come from my brother. And I'm thinking, well, why do I explain it to both of them? Why don't I just record a demo, give it to one of them, and then give it to the other one? Uh, so, you know, saving time. So I don't need to explain everything multiple times. That's my scenario. Another scenario, if you're a developer and you want to demonstrate a product that you've created, uh, you could create a screencast, a demonstration video, put it on your website, people can download it and actually see what your product looks like. It's, you know, when you're, you've created some uh, fantastic project, to have a website that's just loads and loads of text and the old screenshot doesn't often convey what the product can really do and the power of the product, whereas a recorded demo often can, or can better. Third example, uh, you want to record everything that a user does. Maybe for a usability study, you want to find out how a user is using your application. So you're not creating a demo for them, they're creating the content for you. So you could have someone sit there and use your application or use your computer for a while, and then you could analyze later on where they moved the mouse, where they tended to click on, if they tended to stumble and all that kind of stuff. And you could you know, gather that information from recording a demo, um, or them recording a demo. And then, well, any other reason you can think of really for recording um, what goes on on your screen. Um, those are the only three I could think of, to be honest. And even then I had help. So uh, what options have we got? Well, these are two options that I've discovered. Let's say you've got one computer. You've got one PC and you want to do your recording on that PC. Uh, you can record exactly what you do. So you start the recording software and then you just start doing the stuff. And all the time you're doing the stuff, it's recording it off to disk. That's one way of doing it. Another way is to, still using only one computer, record yourself remotely controlling another session on the same computer. And what I mean by that is, um, I'll show you a bit later, actually. I was going to do a demo, but I'll do that later. Um, you can have a CNC server running under another user so that I can hold on as me but actually remotely control another user which is on the same PC. It sounds a bit confusing, and it kind of is. So I'll demo it later. Um, but this is all still with just one computer. And a third one is to have a virtual machine, something like QEMU or VMware or any of the other mechanisms for running a PC inside a PC. And you could record that, that window. So rather than record your own computer, you're recording a kind of virtual machine. 
well, it's not a kind of virtual machine, it is a virtual machine uh, in a window. The benefit of doing that is, I happen to run um, Ubuntu Linux on here, but if I wanted to record a demo of something else, like SUSE Linux or Nopix or something like that, I could run Nopix in a virtual machine or SUSE in a virtual machine and record that, rather than recording Ubuntu, if that's not what I wanted to record. So there's a few options if you've got one computer for recording uh, using one PC. If you've got two or more computers, the options open up a little bit. You can still use the VNC option, but you could remotely control another PC. Um, I've done this at home. I have a second PC which has a plain vanilla install of Linux. This PC has quite a, a load of rubbish installed on it. There's loads of garbage that a user probably would not have on a standard install. So you can see I've got like oodles of gunk on here and you know it's, it, that, that makes the, the recording not authentic from my point of view. If, someone was, if I wanted to show a demo of some, to someone of um, what Ubuntu looks like out of the box, well, it wouldn't be true to show them a recording of my PC because my PC was installed you know, a year ago and it's been upgraded and there's loads of additional software on it. So by remotely controlling another PC, that other PC might be running a plain vanilla install of Ubuntu, for example. And Ubuntu comes with a VNC server built in. You can enable it very quickly and easily by going to uh, the system menu and you can see this little remote desktop option. So on that remote computer you turn on remote desktop which turns on a VNC server and then from this PC I can remotely control that one and record what I'm doing while I do it. Okay. Does that all make sense? Vaguely? Uh -huh. Good. Uh, there's two further to this, there's two ways to record. You can do a single stage recording which is you're recording whatever you're doing, whether you're doing it via VNC or remotely controlling or doing it locally, however it is, the single stage recording records what's going on and then encodes it into an immediately viewable and distributable um, format. For example, an MPEG video. I mean, we've all, I suspect, watched an MPEG video or an AVI file or a MOV file at some point. And if you could record a demo and it goes straight to an MPEG video that you could upload or you could email to someone, then that would be great. And that's one of the options you can do. And one of the pieces of software that I'll show you can do that. The downside with this is the encoding of your screen to MPEG or OG or MOV or whatever codec you choose is pretty CPU intensive. So what you're doing is you're recording what you're doing and you're consuming some CPU and, and memory to do that and then there's whatever it is you're doing that you're demoing and that's consuming CPU and memory and the two are kind of fighting a little bit. So um, this um, is a simple way to do it, to do recording, a single stage, record it, you create a, a video that you can upload straight away and that's great but you need a fairly beefy PC to do this. This PC that I've got is less than a year old and I can't record at full screen on this and it's a fairly meaty you know CPU and I can't record full screen it, it, it drops frames and it's not smooth and it wouldn't be very easily watchable so I'd have to reduce the resolution or choose the second option which is a two-stage recording two-stage recording you record what you're doing and it gets saved to some intermediate format and then you use some other utility to convert that intermediate format into an OG file an MPEG or an AVI or whatever you want to actually distribute I personally go for this because it uses less CPU time and you end up with a nicer looking video at the end of it. If you want to record an audio track, you've got two options there as well. You can record the audio at the same time as you're doing the demo. Now, in my experience, this is not a good idea. I wouldn't recommend doing that because what you end up doing is while you're recording what you're doing, you're talking into the microphone. So you're trying to think, what am I doing? in order to do it, and then what am I saying that describes what I'm doing and what I'm about to do and what I've just done. And, you know, I've got the brass of an ant and I can't really combine all those things together at the same time and so that doesn't work for me because I end up, you, well, besides the fact you can hear the mouse going in the background and, you know, the wife comes in and goes, yeah, what's for dinner tonight? And that's in the middle of your recording and it's like, oh, jeez, start all over again. So, you know, it's not ideal to record audio at the same time as and you tend to go, uh, 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 well, I do anyway, uh, while, while I'm recording. So, yeah, 
may be okay if it's not for public consumption. So if I'm making a video just for my brother, it doesn't really matter if he hears my wife walk in going, yeah, what's for dinner? Uh, not that she does it in that voice or says it in that way. God, this is being videoed, isn't it? Oh, yeah. oh dear. So the other option, moving on, is to record the audio later. Is to not record the audio while you're doing the demo, but just record the demo. Concentrate on getting the demo looking right, clicking on the right things, moving the mouse nice and smoothly and slowly so people can see where you're clicking and all that kind of stuff. And then watch it back and think about what you're going to say as you, you know, rehearse it. This is what I do. Rehearse it while I'm watching it and think, oh yeah, there I must mention that. Oh, I must mention that dialogue box and why we're clicking on that tick box and all that kind of stuff. And then watch it again, but use an audio tool like Audacity, Audacity, to record what you're saying while you're watching the video. So you watch the video and talk about it while you're watching it. Then you've only got to concentrate on what you've got to say. You don't have to think about what you're clicking on or anything like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I found that to be producing better results than talking while I'm demoing. And in fact, if you if you go online and look at some of the screencasts that are available on Google Video, you'll find that you do get like lots of background noise, like machines beeping and mouse clicking and you know that kind of stuff. And it is just not pleasant, in my opinion. So, what are you going to record on? Well, of course. We're not going to use Windows or a Mac, are we? Well, you know, some people do. So there are some high quality uh, proprietary tools, um, su such as, oh, I haven't written them up here, uh, Camtasia is one of them. It, the old school, you might remember, uh, Lotus Screen Cam did the same kind of thing. Um, so there, there are tools available on Windows and Mac, and some of the tools that we've got here are actually cross-platform. So you can use them on Windows or, or a Mac. On Linux, we've got a wide variety of options here, and I'll go through each one of them. The first one, Demo Recorder. Demo Recorder is not free. There's a trial version, but it plasters the logo all over the video, so it's, it's no good. But it's good for evaluating the product. And um, I've had a lengthy conversation with the author of this product over the last week, and initially the, the product that did the recording encoding to decent codecs was $249 and I just flat told him I wasn't going to buy it because of that was the single reason I wouldn't buy the product is it was too much money and he'd already been thinking about changing his pricing and he did it this week while I was talking to him over email so that's brilliant and it's now 25 quid which I think is a more reasonable figure for you know a utility piece of software it's comparable with you know a night out for a curry a few beers depending on what beer you drink and uh, where you drink it, um, or you know, uh, or something. It's, you know, it's that kind of figure that. Well, personally, I don't mind spending twenty five. And he's also um, added a further twenty five percent off if you use this coupon code. I'll give you the URL later on, but this coupon gives you twenty five percent off it. So if if you like the look of it, you can download the trial and have a look at it. And if you like it, you know, buy the product. Now I get nothing for that. I'm not on a commission for. This and I've already bought the product, so I'm not going to get a discount. I'm already, you know, I'm already done. But you know, it's quite cool. So demo recorder is quite a good application, but you've got to pay for it. Um, it's built on top of free uh, software. So in fact, uh, when you use it, you'll notice maybe some of the names of other products that I'll mention as we go through. Um, the author is brilliant, actually, not just from the fact that he's dropped the price um, within the space of a week, but um, the fact that he gives lengthy, detailed, comprehensive replies to every email I've sent him. Um, and this was before I was a customer, when I was a prospective customer, so you know, you've got to give him credit for that, so that's useful. Um, this records an entire X Windows session, so it can record your entire desktop, as it were, not just one portion of the desktop, not just one window, but it can record the whole screen. And it does the two-stage process, so it records to an intermediate format, and it's nice and quick, and then once it's done that, you can then encode it later on. Um, this is what it looks like. It looks pretty basic, uh, but when you start it up, you get a window that looks like this, and, uh, well, that's my desktop. That looks uncannily similar to that, which is my desktop. So when you start it up, you get your desktop, and you get a little button down here, which is record. You hit that, and it starts recording. You do whatever it is you want to do on the screen, and then when you're finished, you hit the break button. You save it, and you can play it back within this window. It will also do audio recording. Uh, it's got a recording level, like VU-type meter down there. And um, yeah, that's basically it. 
There are lots of other programs that come with it to do the second stage, to encode what you do here. But it's, it's pretty basic. I, I can show you it uh, right now, actually. Uh, actually, no, I had a, a terminal ready for this. So the reason why I'm turning around is because my screen's blank. That's why I'm uh, demo rec. I created a little script just to make it quick and easy for me to start this thing up and, and show you. I say quick. It's yeah. It's got to start X and everything, so it starts the full, full Monty. Oh man. Ding. And there we go. That's demo recorder starting up. When you say it records audio, is the audio the noise and the bleeps. Uh, I don't know. I've never recorded audio because I always do mine afterwards. So. I'll let you know because I've now bought it, I can try it. Um, so yeah, we've got um, a little record button, we just hit record, and now it's recording whatever I'm doing in here, so you know, wiggle the mouse about, lovely. Uh, I want to describe someone, the menus, oh yes, look at all of this, isn't this gorgeous? And tell someone how to change their screensaver or something like that and demo that. And when you're finished, you just press break, and then you save it. So I'll call it demo one. And hit OK. And then let's play it back just to make sure it recorded OK. So there we go. There's my mouse wiggling around all over the place. And then I went up there and I looked at the menus and it just kind of works really. That's pretty good. Yeah, there we go. So that's now in a format that only this player can understand. There's a whole bunch of scripts that you get. You can't really see these very well because they're green on white, but there's a convert to AVI, convert to DV, convert to uh, MPEG4, VOB, you know, there's like all different converters built in that convert whatever you've just recorded into, you know, some usable format. Okay, so that's the first option, demo recorder. Any questions about that? So, yes? Do you find the small desktop size more limiting? Um, I deliberately record a lower resolution because I want it to be able to be played back on people's machines that don't have tremendously huge resolution. So, but there's a command line option where you can choose what resolution you want the desktop. So it can be any resolution in any aspect ratio you choose. You just the default is 800 by 600, but you can change it. And how would that work if you wanted to record something the size of your own screen? Um, because there's a lot of furniture around the edge of that. Um, I think there's a full screen option, okay. uh, but I've not tried it. But I'll let you know. Uh, good question. Yes. What's the typical? Size of your intermediate file. Uh, I can, well, how big was uh, that file there? Uh, it gets plopped in here and it was called demo one. So that's 1.6 meg for a few seconds. So yeah, it can, it can climb. But I think there's various options you can choose for making it a lower or encoded better as it were okay so let's move on to the next one hey, hey, hey. next one is istanbul istanbul is free uh, it's mostly written in python uh, it uses gstream very heavily it's under quite active development uh, the guy who um, it, it kind of seemed to have stalled a little while and it didn't move on at all it was at um, release 0.1 and it's been bumped up to 0.2 and the guy's actually done a load of changes to it. Um, it, it records the entire screen or a portion of it um, and it does a single stage recording code. Now the old version used to do the two stage, the record and then encode later. But he's changed it so that the record button it starts encoding straight away which chews up your CPU and spits it out. Um, but I've reported a bug to ask him to put back the put it back into a two stage. And whether he will or not, I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see. And if I knew how to code, I'd put it myself. <laughs> um, so Istanbul looks like um, this. Uh, oh God, where is it? Uh, oh crud. 
execute Istanbul. Now, I knew there was a reason why I did this. Um, oh, I didn't do it. Bear with me just one moment. Uh, 214. Right, now it'll work. There's a slight bug in the release that I've got at the moment. Now, nothing appears to have happened. Well, what's actually happened is this little red dot has appeared up here. And that's Istanbul. And uh, if you want to record your desktop, you left click. So as soon as you left click, it will start recording. Okay, doink, and the icon changes. So right now it's recording whatever I do on the desktop. So, um, uh, oh, I don't know, what can I open that's going to be uh, not dangerous? Um, yeah, anything, really, you know, start moving around. And to stop recording, you just click on it again. Like that. Now, when you hit stop, this preview window comes up, where you get the option to save what you've done. Now, it records to OG, OG Theora. So, uh, uh, demo2.og. Now, you can preview it by pressing the play button here and it plays it in this little area up here. Uh, that was me thinking about what I was going to do, and then I clicked on some various menus, and it records OK. Now, bear in mind that my screen is currently running at 1024 by 768 If I try and record this laptop at full screen, which is 1920 by 1200 it just can't cope. It skips and hops all over the place, because the Theora codec uh, encoding thing is quite CPU intensive. Uh, but that's okay for me because I only need to record at that um, that resolution. So there we go. I've saved it, and I can play that back in my normal media player, um, whatever M player. There are some options. You right-click it, and you can say I only want to record an area, or I want to record the whole screen. Uh, there's also options to record sound or not, record the mouse pointer or not, and record 3D is useful if you want to record the 3D XGL type effects. Um, there's a special option for that. And these options down here um, will encode to a smaller size. So if it's 1024 by 768, it'll actually record it and squish it down to a smaller size, which helps to reduce the footprint of the video. Any questions about that at all? Okay. So, that's Istanbul. So here's just a couple of screenshots. Um, I mentioned that Istanbul is based on GStreamer, which is a multimedia framework, and this here is, um, is the command it issues to, to GStreamer to actually do the recording. This is a little debug thing that it pops up just to show you what it does. And actually, you can take that and manually run that yourself. You can run GStreamer just with that command line, and it will record. So it's, you know, without using Istanbul at all, you could, you could record something. And in fact, I've got that later on. The next one is XVidCap. XVidCap again is open. It did seem to be stalled, but now it's been restarted. Uh, XVidCap is quite cute because what you can do is this. XVidCap. Now, this is XVidCap, and um, there's some configurable options that make it either record a sequence of still images or an MPEG video. I've got it set to record an MPEG video. And the really neat thing about this that I quite like is... Um, what window can I open? Right, let's just open the terminal because that would be nice and easy. Let's say I want to record just that window. I don't want to record the whole desktop, I just want to record that window. What you do is in XVidCap, you hit the little pipette there, and then you choose, notice the cursor changes to a crosshair, you choose the window that you want to record, and it then moves and draws a red box not quite around the window which I'm not sure why that is, whether it's something to do with the window manager I'm using or whether it's a bug, I don't know. Um, so then when you want to start recording, you hit record. And now everything I do in here is now being recorded. I don't know if you can see this because it's greyed out, but it, the, the frame counter is clocking up uh, up here, showing how many frames it's recording of, uh, of this window here. So let's just stop it. Okay, so I should find somewhere a file, oh I don't need that, do I? A file called test1.mpeg. Oh, there we go, there's our test0 and test1.mpeg. 
Oh god, I'm going to risk running one of these. One. It was 001, wasn't it? 001. So if I play that back... Great! It doesn't work. <laughs> one of the other many media players that there are on the next will, I'm sure, play it. Yeah, there you go. Make it full screen. Woo! That looks horrible. So yeah, that's what I recorded. So, so that's XVidCat is yet another recording application. And there's Bin it. Um, captures to images or to an MP video. And that's the gorgeous screenshot of XVidCat in all its glory. Uh, the next one is VNC Rec. VNC Rec is good. Um, because it records a, a VNC directly. So if you run VNC Rec, it will ask you what remote machine you want to connect to, and it will connect it, and then start recording whatever happens in that VNC session. The downside with VNC Rec is it records um, to this VNC format, which you have to kind of jump through hoops to convert to anything else. And the videos that I've made with VNC Rec have really kind of made me want to throw the PC out the window with frustration, trying to get it to convert that reliably into anything else. I kind of try and avoid this wherever possible. And it looked like it had stalled, but someone's created a little patch that um, gets VNC Rec to create a sequence of still images at .pngs, which should be easier to convert, but I've not tried that. I've kind of been burnt once with this, so I, I generally don't touch it anymore. This is what it looks like. Here we've got a terminal uh, being run by Alice, and Alice here is running VNC server minus 800 by 600, color depth 24. So that will mean Alice will start a VNC server. We then, as Alan over here, I'm only known as Alice at the weekends, uh, this is uh, Alan runs VNC rec, the recording program, minus record, and then localhost colon one, which is uh, the host and the uh, desktop that um, VNC is running as. And then you end up with this uh, VNC session. So I'm now remotely controlling Alice's uh, desktop. And everything I do in there gets recorded. And I can play it back with VNC rec minus play to play back that VNC session. And then you use other tools to convert it, as I said, painfully and with lots of wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, there's one more. <laughs> Sorry, there's quite a lot of these, I found. Uh, VNC to SWF, uh, it's open but converts flash files. So of course it's inherently evil because it's got flash related to it. But it actually works quite well. Um, what this does is, again, you VNC to a remote computer or to another session on the local machine. And um, it records everything to a flash video. It's pretty quick. Uh, it doesn't place a tremendous load on the local machine. It records pretty well. And the neat thing is that the Python incarnation of VNC to SWF, this is the C incarnation, and this is the Python version. The Python version comes with a utility that allows you to convert what that does into an MPEG video. So you can then quite easily transfer it and make it into something more usable somewhere else, like an org or a mob or whatever else you want to convert it to. It's a bit of a bugger to get running. Uh, you have to monkey about with a few libraries. But I'm going to document everything I've done and put it all on our wiki so that if you want to try out any of these, I'll give you a step-by-step. -step. I've already done it. I just need to paste it onto our wiki. And this is what it looks like. Here I'm running VNC to SWF, the name of the flash file that I want to create, and then the VNC server that I want to connect to. And um, what you get is a VNC session open like this, and you probably can't see, but it says stopped up there. When you want to start recording, you press F9. As soon as you start, uh, as soon as you do that, it says recording, and then records whatever you do in that window. And then when you want to stop, you press F9 again. And then you end up with a flash file that you could immediately distribute, or you could convert to some other format. The last two, I'm not really going to go through, they're just in here for reference. FFmpeg is a command line tool that you can run <laughs> like this to grab the X session and record it to a file. And this can record direct to MPEG4, so this is a single stage uh, process. Um, it's quite useful, 
uh, but it obviously requires a bit of grunt in the CPU because it's recording and encoding at the same time. Similarly, as I mentioned earlier, you could do the same thing with GStreamer on the command line. You could type a command line which will record um, the uh, current X desktop and pass it through a bunch of these things called pipelines and at the end of it you end up with an OG file spat out. That's exactly what Istanbul does. It builds up a pipeline in GStreamer and then spits out this OG file at the end. Which is what that debug line that I showed you... Ooh, it stopped working. Where is it? There it is. Istanbul. See that debug line? You see these exclamation marks? It's passing through one pipeline to the next one and then eventually dumps it out to the temp directory as an OG file. Um, so that's FFmpeg and that's GStreamer and then there's a bunch of links to each of those applications where you can get them all and I'll also put some stuff on our wiki and right at the beginning I said which one do I use and which one do I think you should use uh, well I still haven't quite decided uh, because there's so many of them and they've all got their advantages but the fact that I've paid 25 quid for Demo Recorder kind of gives me the impetus to probably try and use that which I'll try and I'll put some of the videos that I've made on the wiki as well <laughs>